GOP pollster Mitchell Brown joins me now. He has something interesting to say. If the election were held today, Trump would win. Make your case. Yeah, so again, like, like you said, if it was held today, he wins. Why he wins? Georgia, North Carolina, Arizona, and Nevada are actually in his camp right now, as has, we speak. Has he moved up? In, you're a pollster. Yeah. Has he moved up in the polls in those four swing states? Yes, Arizona specifically, he is now outside the margin of error. Like, Donald Trump will be winning Arizona. That is not, not even remotely in doubt. Uh, the other three states have been trending all further his direction the past month. So Harris had that little bump as soon as she became nominee. There was a debate where she had a, a moderate to decent performance. And so since then, it's just been a slow, slow trajectory downhill for her and up for Trump. The national polling puts 49 Harris, 47.2 Trump. That's a very, very slim margin. Yep. And again, on the national popular vote, that's a great margin for Trump. Again, we're talking about the Electoral College here. So like I ah, mentioned, with okay. Trump winning North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, that leaves the three Rust Belt states. Trump has to win one of Pennsylvania, Michigan, or Wisconsin. Harris has to win all three. And from my numbers that I'm seeing internally, Trump has Pennsylvania as of today. Really? As of today? As of today. So that's a movement in his favor very, very recently. Yes, it is. I'm saying on the show today that Trump's on a roll. Uh, I think your numbers suggest he is. He is, yeah. And, and, it, and Harris has stalled. Yeah, she's stalled again. And it's not really been a... She was an immediate bump just from getting out there. People yep. wanted to see Biden gone, and so she had this little bit of enthusiasm that was kind of artificial on its front. But now that artificial nature of her campaign that's been here for three months now has really weighed on people, and it's declined her. I watched the recent... or I saw the recent New York Times-Siena poll, and it shows that Republicans are likely to win back the Senate. They're going to get, uh, where is it, uh, Texas. Uh, Cruz beats uh, Al Red 48-44 uh, at this moment. New, uh, Montana, uh, Tim Sheehy uh, beats uh, Testa 52-44. to 44. And in Florida, uh, Rick Scott is out front with 49-44 to 44 against his Democrat opponent. Yep. That would give them the Senate. Correct. And then let's not forget West Virginia uh, with Manchin leaving. Uh, Jim Justice will be the next senator from West Virginia. So let's talk about the rest of the map. We yep. talked about these Rust Belt swing states. Uh, Bernie Moreno, if you went back three months ago, he was trailing Trump by 10, 12, 14 points in polling and down by, uh, to Sherrod Brown by 5, 6, 7. Now we look at it today, that is a dead even race and it's trending for Moreno. That campaign has done a remarkable job and it's the one race where we've actually outspent Democrats. So let's talk about the, the other swing state Senate races. Go. Wisconsin and Pennsylvania. Wisconsin, again, Eric Hovde's campaign has done a great job of bringing that to a localized issue, not making it solely about the top of the ticket. So that's trending in the right direction. Uh, Pennsylvania on, on the Senate side, I'm, I'm a little more bearish there, uh, just because, again, Trump's going to have to perform three or four points uh, ahead there for us to have a chance on that Senate race. So the, he's going to win these four swing states if today's numbers are, are still accurate. So he wins the presidency, Correct. the Electoral College for sure. Yes. The Republicans take the Senate. That looks pretty solid at this point. Yes. I know it's a little, you know, a few weeks to go, but it looks solid. How about the House? The House, <laughs> again, with so many of these races, if you just go back to 22, we're talking about people winning races by 200, 400, 1,000 votes. Um, so if someone asked me to say today what's going to happen, we'll hold the, ho the House by less of a margin than we did in 22. So two or three have a seat majority in the House for us. I I've always wanted to ask pollsters this question. When very few people have landlines and people don't pick up on their cell phones if they don't know who's calling, how do you take a poll? Yeah, so this is what I always tell people. Don't, don't trust your, your public polling. Uh, it's put out for, for two reasons. One, it's, it's a media blitz by the campaign to raise donations or to say, hey, look, we're in trouble or we're doing so well. The second is a lot of it is groups that are, are trying to dissuade voters from voting, saying, oh, your candidate's already lost or, look, your candidate's doing great. You should turn out. Um, but yeah, that's, this was the, the polling breakdown in 2016, is everyone was wrong, and it's because you have to meet people where they are. So if it's men 55 plus in Alabama, I am going to still call that landline. They will answer. If it's men under the age of 29 in Atlanta or inside Philadelphia, I'm going to send a text or I'm going to do an online uh, push to poll. And so again, it's meeting people where they are. I'll send a fan boat out to people in Mississippi if that's how I have to talk to them. But we want to go meet people where they are and not have to wait our sampling. And most of the internal uh, numbers for the Trump campaign are spot on because we will go to those lengths to do so. And as of now, he wins. Vote today, Trump wins. Yes, sir. We'll wrap it up with that. Uh, Mitchell Brown, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks we appreciate for having it. Us, yes, sir.